Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are doing another double name monster mash. I think the last one I did of these was back when we did the tarantula hawk, if I remember correctly. Yes, I can't remember, but basically how this works is I take an existing animal or insect or fish or something that's in our real world that has two animal names. So for example, one of the last ones I did was a tarantula hawk. So I literally took a tarantula and a hawk and mix them together. The real world animal that this is based off of is actually a wasp, but instead I just take the names specifically and divide them and then recombine them. So here I have a list that I found online of double named animals. And so basically I'm gonna do a random number generator to pick one randomly that I will combine today. All right, so we have our random number generator ready to go. So let's go ahead and see which number we get from our list. 52, all right, so let's count backwards. All right, we got wolf eel. That's gonna be pretty interesting. So we are gonna combine a wolf and an eel to make a new monster. I'm actually really excited for this one because that just sounds awesome. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one probably. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in and do the rough sketches for this creature and kind of try a couple of different designs of how I can combine these two animals. And then from there, we'll pick a design and then develop it further and then we will have a finished monster. All right, I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so just to break this down to you guys, I kind of had an idea for this one as soon as I read it. I kind of already knew what I wanted to do, but I just wanted to try a couple of different things first and just see maybe if I liked it more. Um, so I kind of went with more of an eel look for these first two and wasn't really digging it. Um, I used some different elements from both animals, but I didn't feel it was like meshing very well. Um, so I was like, what if we just made more of an aquatic wolf? And I thought that just sounded really cool. So I just dove in and did more of a wolf stock body with different elements of the eel. So at least for me personally, I am really digging this third design. I think it would be really cool in my monster manual. It could be used in D&D games. And I think it would be a really awesome creature to design and make. So basically I used the base wolf stock, but then I added a lot of flair and extra elements to make it look like an aquatic wolf and also added in all of the eel bits and bobs and all that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and run with this design. I didn't like the other two ideas I was going with, so I just, I really like how this looks. I think it's going to look really cool and it will be interesting to make a really cohesive and awesome wolf eel. It's going to be cool. I'm excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump in and put this guy in more of a dynamic pose and add all the little details that I want to him. Then we'll go in and do a line art and color and then we will be done. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. So after picking which design I wanted to go with, I really wanted to push this one and try something a little bit different and really push the dynamic pose and I guess the scene overall. So usually I just draw one monster when highlighting these different monster mashes, but I thought, you know, wolves are pack creatures, so you probably wouldn't find one by itself. I know that eels are much more solitary creatures, but I really wanted to play off of the, the wolf pack element. So I decided, you know what, let's just draw two wolf eels hanging out together on the beach, probably going to go on a hunt and rustle up some grub and I think it turned out looking really cool, especially after the sketch. I got super excited with having two kind of interacting and being in the scene together. So after I figured out the sketch of how I wanted these guys to look and their placement, I went in and started doing a uh, line work around both of the creatures. And this really brought them to life and started to solidify their look. And I also got to add in some extra details that I didn't really put as uh, thoroughly in the rough sketch. So it was just, I just love these things and they were coming together so nicely. And I always love doing line work and putting in some nice, crisp, clean lines.
So then after finishing the line work, I went in and did a base color and started to block out the different colors that I wanted for these creatures. I talk about it a little bit more towards the end of the video, but you know, I'll just, I'll talk about it way more now. Um, I was going back and forth on how I wanted to color these guys because there's so many different varieties and diversity within eel coloration. So I decided to go with the Mora eel because that particular species of eel has a lot of different interesting and cool colors depending on where they live or uh, what part of the ocean they're in, things like that. There's a lot of different colorations that are present in the Mora eel family. Also, I just totally gonna put it out there. Don't quote me on that being 100% accurate. I don't know a ton about eels, but I did see that there was a lot of different color variation within Mora eels. So at least for me, I'm assuming depending on where they live um, and I guess their genetic makeup, that will make a big difference on the coloring that they receive. So for this first one, I've always really liked the yellow Mora eels with kind of the brownish spotting. Like that's kind of the iconic Mora eel that you see in a lot of different um, paintings, illustrations, stuffed animals. I see them everywhere. So I for sure wanted to make that the primary, I guess you'd call him the alpha wolf eel. So I wanted to make sure I had that coloring present in one of them. And then the other coloring I found while Googling different color variations, and I personally haven't seen one of these before, but it was gorgeous. It's like a brown eel with these golden orangey spotting texture to it. And I'm assuming it's the scales like hitting light because it looked at least a little bit different than the spotting of the yellow Mora eel. It looked much more like it was clumped based off of how the light was hitting the scales. So, I mean, I'd like to do some more research and actually concretely know why this thing had the orange speckling and spotting and how it looked different than the yellow one, but I just saw it and I'm like, I gotta make this one the other eel because that will go really well with the yellow brightness of the, I guess you can call him the alpha eel. And then this beta eel is a little bit more of a toned back color, but it still has some beautiful coloration with the oranges and the yellows. So then after I finished doing the colors for my wolf eels, I went in and blocked in a background. I wanted it to look like they were like patrolling the beach or coming out of the water or going out on a hunt after being in the water all day. Um, so I put them on a beach with some rolling tides and I added in a little crab just for something cute and a little bit of element to nod back to them being at the ocean. And then I added in my shading and highlights and they were all done and man, Guys, I just love this one. I'll gush about it more at the end, but I'm super proud of this one and I think these guys look amazing. All right, and we are all done with this Monster Mash. And guys, I am so freaking proud of this one. I really love how it turned out. This one is just, it's so cool. And I really like having two of the monsters because it kind of shows the difference in coloration that could be within the pack of different wolf eels. And I don't know, I, I think this looks really epic. I really tried my best to apply the texturing and coloring that would be on a Mora eel and kind of have some color diversity like the actual eels do as well. And I just think these things look really cool and really intimidating. It would be really scary if you were an adventurer and just happened upon these. They would just, they'd probably ruin your day, especially if you had a big pack of them against you. I think that would be a really tough battle because they have the advantage of both being a wolf and being able to go in water and be just as fast and agile as an eel and uh, I just think these look so cool guys. I, I can't tell you enough like how happy I am with this piece overall. And I think I'm finally starting to get a little bit better at backgrounds. I know I said that in my last Monster Mash battle video, but this one I feel I finally made some headway on like texturing creatures and texturing backgrounds 
and I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy with this one. Thanks again, guys, for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like or left me a comment down below or shared it. I would love if you shared this video with any of your friends that like monster creation and just monster art. And if you aren't already, you can hit that subscribe button. I have new videos every week. And also keep your eye out for this May. I have a pretty cool announcement that deals with my monster mashes, but that's that's a little bit of tidbit I'm gonna give you guys, but keep an eye out in May for something cool with my monster mashes. So thanks again guys for stopping by and I will see